came up with the list of options for the community to survey and test. So but let's walk through these, these options. So certainly, um, if you received the uh, flyer in the mail, we listed some of these. Uh, well, we listed all of them. So that you had a visual, um, it's a quick little flyer. There was also a letter that tried to give you more information, because I know some folks are more flyer oriented and some want a little bit more detail. So I'll be going through those. Um, so this improvement, about $508,000, we go towards uh, the American Disabilities Act and bringing up our <coughs> parks such as Arrowhead, which is out at the Indian Hills near Parmalee. We've hear, heard from those constituents out there that there's not much out there for them, and they do use that park regularly. Um, so we would be looking at some enhancements to that like Arrowhead Park, also looking at a multi-use court so kids, families, grandparents can go and there's a nice little trail system, there's a new playground, um, but really to enhance that, that area. Kittredge Park as well as Wolf Park. We have a... a I'm sorry, quick question. Uh, the school charges for the uh, rent for the uh, property that Wolf Recreation Center is on, is there a charge for No, there is not a charge. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. So that is one of the improvements, but certainly it's going to be district-wide. It's not just one park. We're trying to enhance three different parts that we know are heavily utilized. Next, that's our Evergreen Lake. That's the North Trail section uh, that goes along 74, starting from the dam down to the, I call it the Fisherman parking lot where you cross over. That was the trail section that was closed. Um, due to bin wall failures, the, the bin walls that were holding that trail basically just started disintegrating. Good news is our parks team, along with lots of study, um, we have a short-term fix that we're hoping will hold up. Um, we're monitoring it closely, but we're hoping to get at least two to three years for that short-term fix, but it's only a short-term fix. Yes, I'm sorry. Is it, is the trail contingent on, my understanding is the highway's not totally fixed yet. Uh, uh, water drainage that's kind of living the flood. Are you guys dependent on uh, CDOT? We are working. CDOT is one of our stakeholders. We're in, in the f phase two of that North Lake yeah. Trail. We just had a community meeting last Thursday about it. But CDOT is well informed as far as how can they help us with this project. I'm kind of stuck until they totally uh, mitigate all the damage. Well, actually, we're trying to coordinate all of that. Right now, we're in a, going into our third phase, where we have a TAP grant, which is a Transportation Alternative Program grant. And certainly, that is a grant through um, the CDOT, the feds. So hopefully, they will be helping with all of that. And right now, it feels pretty very positive on all of the efforts on bringing um, a new uh, plan to, to create that trail so it not just lasts maybe a year, that it lasts the next 30 to 40 years. Um, but the ticket is that number, $3 million, it's a heavy one. It's still being under review, so we're still trying to figure out what that cost might be. So. Have you participated uh, in meetings with CDOT on the funding proposals? CDOT is at the table, so they all, okay. everyone knows about this trail. Everywhere from your county commissioners to your state to... Uh, did they, the, by any chance, did they talk about the programs that are available to fund that? Yes, trail? yes. Did they talk about an enhancement program? They've talked about other grants that come into play. But, okay. Yeah. All right. And directions that we are eligible for. But we have received over $400,000 in grants to do the design, the study, and what could be built and how much it's going to cost. Um, adding a gym at Buchanan Rec Center. Um, we gave um, some options to the t t Citizens Task Force. They came up on the three cross course, eight hoops, about 1,800 square feet, as well as a walking, jogging track. I've heard that, I think, regularly. We do have a lot of walkers in this community. Certainly, people like to walk outside, but when the weather is not um, that would just provide a nice new amenity. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. You know, when that survey was written, I questioned the, the guy that did the survey. It said, would you like a walking track? Uh -huh. and, and there was a huge percentage that said yes. Would you like a gymnasium? 
lot, lot less. So I asked, I said, do you know you have to have those together? And there's two things that have to be together. You have to have the gym in order to have the walking path. But most people wanted the walking path, but not necessarily the gym. So how do you rectify that in your mind? Well, I think if you're going to build the gym, you, you should do the walking trail. And that's just my opinion. But well, I know so that. that. We, yeah. But so, if you want a walking track without the gym, how do you justify that? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Okay. I think you, we need to look at that if people are only willing to pay for a jogging track. It, 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 it takes up a large amount of space, so it feels kind of like a void. And um, it was a walking track, not a running track before. And now it's a walking running because if you've, if you've ever been in a gym where there's walking and running, I have. you can't walk, really, because it, it, the runners are going by. So anyway. Yeah. I, I, just, I disagree with that. I mean, I, I've used facilities where there's walking running tracks, and it's it's perfectly fine. Yeah, I've used uh, that for running it. Uh, another individual would use it for walking around the perimeter. It didn't appear to be a problem. Okay. All right. Good, good comments. Um, adding the fitness area, we're looking at about or $800,000. It would be move from downstairs up to the upper level, kind of where the current offices are, um, so that we gain more space and the ability to make sure that um, we can expand that. Um, and then base improvements. Certainly there's a ticket for that. Certainly if we put fitness in that other area, we would need to relocate our front desk from an operational standpoint. That actually makes more sense than anything. People come in. They don't know where necessarily to go, whether they're coming here for a community meeting or a class. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I've got one hand up there. Go back to the trail for one second. Okay. The three million dollars, you don't have to show it. Okay. The three million dollars, is that to make a permanent fix to that trail, yes. or is it to make a permanent fix plus a bunch of improvements on It's like to make a permanent fix to the trail. Just, the, just permanent fix. Permanent fix, they're exploring, you know, what the community has told us is many of them do not like to walk on that trail. Yeah. We need to, the other piece is there's a water line. Your walk, main water line is sitting underneath that trail. They go one and one, yeah. or one and two. Um, so we have the trail is used to help protect the water line, and then the, the trail is being used for multi users yeah. So it would be a permanent fix to this trail to set. This, to Does that include the highway? Does that include the highway hitting place? It does not include the highway, I mean, but there's, you know, ideas like a curb and gutter to help with the drainage and giving us more um, uh, space on the trail so that we could have a kind of a multi-use from, because 10 feet is kind of a number that's been given. You know, you're, you're kind of okay on the west end, but as you go down towards the dam, it gets tighter and then you have ADA constraints and those types of things that they're still navigating. Okay, I'm not sure whose hand went up first, but I'm going to go this uh, way. Do we own the trail land or do we the No, the, the, the land is owned by Denver, and even the road in which the road was built is owned by Denver. Um, Denver, our CDOT has the, the rights to have the, tr the road there, and we have the rights to have the trail there as well as water. Is it expired any time? No. Yeah, that, I mean, everyone here is aware of the fact that last few years, everybody in Denver seems to have found all, all of our trails. <laughs> My question is, why do we have to pay higher taxes for any trails than people from Denver? And Denver owns them. Why, why can't they pick up their share of the trail? Because I'm just tired of seeing cars parked all up and down Buffalo Park Road and I'm waiting for the first fire to start. Because those two parking lots by Three Sisters are full. And people from everywhere are parked all over the place and all we need is one hot exhaust system and some leaves and boom. That's a Jeff So Oaks space issue, but I'm still concerned about why do we have to carry the burden on that? Right. And uh, this this is one of the things we argue a lot with the because it, it, it's erosion under growth. But so far we have been able to fix you got to say, yeah, we'll pay for the number. But is that right. the first jump into the mix? The they are at the they are at the table with the discussions of this, so they are very well so informed. Well, okay. Good point. Can you add a new to that comment? Which I agree with 100. There are a variety.
variety of interagency agreements involved. Is that correct. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and That's one correct. of those contractual arrangements, that I call it contractual extension, is that the EPRD has ex accepted responsibilities that you're now funding. And Three million is part of that. That's only estimated construction cost at this time. That's we correct. We all know that there's been plenty of grant money coming in, and there will be more. And in addition to that, you have the additional costs of administration and the increased maintenance of other factors. So that three million may be a low ball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a couple of points. Uh, Seventy-four is a state highway. Denver doesn't own it. There are programs. Yes, they actually own them all the land underneath here. They do? They do. Oh, boy, that'd be interesting. Uh, CDOT has programs, enhancement programs, that help fund those trails. That's why I was wondering if you knew anything about it. Yes, so, you know, certainly our intentions as EPRD, because we are charged with managing. Just so everybody knows, the trail and the water line is an IGA with the Metro, Evergreen Metro District and Evergreen Park and Rec District. Denver has allowed us to have an IGA, but that was for the purpose. EPRD built the trail. You, we paid, used taxpayers' dollars 30-some years ago to use taxpayers' dollars to build this trail. This trail is failing now. Um, and Denver is at the table. We're trying to certainly make sure we're aligning the design, because Denver would have to sign off on any design that we have and, and making sure that we're having the funding for it. And I, I'm, I'm going to have to find out about that. When I was working with, uh, I, have, I was one of the consulting managers for the intersection. We had nothing to do with Denver. It was just state and federal. So I'm curious how Denver got involved. Okay. So if you have trail questions, like I said, we had a very good community meeting. We're going to be getting information on specific for this site and the what's proposed. Uh, is everybody comfortable with me moving forward?